All right. I'm Tom Pruchet, Director of Electrification for Monroe and Associates. If you don't know who we are, we're an engineering consultancy. We're famous for lean design and lean manufacturing methodologies. Uh, we do a lot of teardowns of electric vehicles uh, and other various commodities, everything from beverage dispensers to HVAC systems. Uh, but here, we're here to talk to Joe Cleaver, who's got an interesting endeavor that he's taking on here. And uh, we're gonna talk about that and see what it's all about. So with that, uh, welcome Joe to Monroe Live. And we, uh, we're very interested in what you're about to do and supportive of it with as much as we know of it so far. So uh, tell us about it. Uh, maybe you can show us what you're doing. Uh, give us an introduction to what is the uh, solar cannonball run yeah, so my name is Joe Cleaver, as you said, and I'm getting ready to go on a solar cannonball run. So purely solar powered. In this Tesla, I'm gonna go from New York, the Red Ball Garage, all the way to Portofino Hotel in LA. I'm gonna do it completely self-contained solar power. Now what I've got here is a all-in-one inverter charge controller. I've got one of 64 panels. This is a 100 watt solar panel by SunPower. These are the same cells, Maxion cells, that are in the Aptera. That's 100 watt panel. And then it's all going into the SolArc inverter charge controller. So I'll have my PV input. I have my load. This is going to do the charging. And then I've got a buffer here, my 5,000 watt hour battery. And how it's going to charge is no different than your home charger. This inverter is putting out 5,000 watts of 240 volt. In fact, we can even power it on now. It takes a moment. And then we can actually start charging off the battery even though we don't have solar. And while that's powering up, I'll show you a little bit of how the panels are gonna be mounted. Again, everything has to be very lightweight. It's easy to get the electronics in, but the difficulty is how do you get 6.4 kilowatts of solar energy? So these panels are very thin, just a few millimeters thick, only about four pounds. So once I arrive at the campsite, and it'll take me about two days to charge, maybe three or more, just depending on weather. I liken it to uh, sailing. If the wind blows, you're going. If not, you just wait. So this panel, here. This mount, this uh, structure has enough tension in it so that it can insert into the panel. It'll keep the uh, panel taut from bowing. And then it can mount and you can adjust the angle by swinging this up or down. And in just a minute, I'll show you how I'm going to anchor it. Now I thought about tent stakes but since I've got 64 of these panels, that's almost 200 tent stakes I'd have to drive and remove every two days. So came up with something a little better, a little more secure, and that's your garden variety lag screw. And with these lag screws, and this, I can drive in a lag screw into the two bottom corners of the panel, right into the dirt, and then, for the final, in the lower portion of this, a final lag screw right here. So now I'm fully secured against wind, um, and I can leave the array set up and charge. In two days, I'll be off on the road again. Of course, efficiency is my biggest concern. I've got to go at least 300 miles every night, maybe longer. And um, oh, I forgot where I was going. Efficiency, 300 miles. Oh, so in order to get the maximum range, I've got to go slow. So, you know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Well, I'm going to take that to heart. So I'm going to try and go 55 and not disturb anyone. I'm going to charge during the day, hit the road that night. So if I can stay on the interstate, stay in the right lane, stay out of people's way, go 55, get maximum range. Maybe if it's congestion, I have to kind of speed up so I'm not clogging things up, I can. But I can go six, uh, 300 miles without much of an issue. If I really push it, 
I've tested and gone, you know, about 350 miles plus. So, you know, originally I thought my plane was so good I didn't need to test it, but I did anyway. It turns out I need to change a few things. So <laughs> 350 is my absolute max. Um, if I did get in a really bad bind, I could use this additional capacity in the battery to push me another maybe 17, 18 miles of range. So that's kind of the setup and that's the plan. This episode of Monroe Live is brought to you by Joa. Joa is the world's leading provider of Tesla accessories, brought to you by a team with over 15 years of experience, engineering highly specialized accessories for automobiles, power charging, and lifestyle. Joa has everything you didn't know you needed for your Tesla, like these all-weather floor liners that are the perfect fit for your vehicle. The anti-skid backing with hook and loop fasteners won't block the accelerator or brake pedal, making for a seamless addition to your vehicle. The foldable car tray is designed to fit the Model 3 and Model Y front seats, providing a comfortable space for working or meal time. The foldable hinges makes this feature easy to open and the foldable function allows for easy storage in your frunk. The tray also fits perfectly into the all-weather trunk liners, which have raised edges to help protect your storage areas from dirt, mud, rain, and snow. Created for Tesla owners by Tesla owners, these products are developed by the Joa team to enhance your Tesla driving experience. View the entire catalog of Joa products at joalife.com. And for a limited time, use code MONROEJOA for 5% off your order. Okay, so you know a couple of questions. Um, you look at the battery array here, and you see it's a five kilowatt hour um, battery, and it has a oddly symmetrical charge and discharge max current. Um, maybe you can comment on that. What is it about this battery that gives it that capability of charging and discharging at the same max rate? Yeah, so it's a lithium iron phosphate chemistry, which is, you know, nice and safe and reliable. And I think what they did is they simply designed it for a 1C rating because there's no active cooling on it. There's no fins. So I think they just lowered that charge and discharge current down to where you could be safe without any any kind of additional cooling. Yeah, with LFP, that should be, uh, you know, quite easily achieved. <clears throat> and the chemistry itself provides that same sort of symmetry in, in most of the, the versions that I've seen at least. So um, the, then you do the other math with that being 48 volts, you know, roughly speaking, we're trying to get to 400 volts DC in the end after all these conversions. Uh, but if you take a look at what 48 volts is relative to 4400, we're talking about, you know, an eight times boost from 48 volts. Uh, and if you can only do 100 amps, that would be one eighth of the uh, 100 amps. So, um, you know, what is that, 16 amps or something like that. So how does 16 amps uh, as a, a total current available, assuming 100% efficiency, how does that end up in the end? What sort of amperage do you expect to be able to feed to the car? as an uh, average or maybe even as a peak if you know those numbers. Yeah, that was that was actually the first thing I tested. So I clamped my uh, amp meter on, on one of these battery leads and I just on the mobile app just started bumping up my charge current in the vehicle to see how far I could go until I reached 100 amps. And it was around, I think, 18 volt or 18 amps at 240 volt in the vehicle was pretty much maxing out my battery. So that's kind of the max charge rate I can go at. All right. so. That's significant, and uh, you know you know from previous experience uh, charging at that rate about how long it takes, and uh, you've allocated what did you say two days for that activity? So in the worst case, what could the two days grow into? Is it three? And I don't know you can't predict the weather, but yeah. but you know you've probably done some thinking about that. Is the two days already got some buffer in it? Could it the, the could two it days buffer? is the two days is would be a completely drained battery to a fully drained battery ideal conditions. Um, I do plan to get to the campsite with with more than zero percent and uh, I plan to leave full so I have a little bit of buffer there. In terms of weather I'm just gonna have to kind of roll with the conditions. Um, you know and this a lot of times we want things exactly now exactly the way we want it and with solar and wind you just kind of have to wait till it's available. Uh, 
back in Houston, I used to kite surf a lot. And the only time you can do it is when the wind conditions are right. So when the wind conditions are right, you go out and have a blast. And when they're not, you just wait it out. <laughs> you sit in your car, you hang out. So that's, that's really my plan, which is why I'm going to bring uh, a lot of camping equipment, a lot of extra food and water. As I get past um, Colorado into the Bureau of Land Management, where I can pretty much set up anywhere, totally off grid. I don't need any kind of camp facilities. Um, I'll be able to charge whenever and wherever, but I've got to have provisions that if it's cloudy, I got to sit it out and wait. So, so do you expect you'll have any idle time at all at the campsite, or will you be spending all your time manipulating solar panels, pointing them to the sun, and uh, you know, getting people to stop parking in front of them? Yeah, that's that's the one variable I'm not really sure on yet. Um, I thought about setting up a little perimeter, you know, and putting it out a little bit further. Um, than the panels. So if anyone stands up to that perimeter, they won't be shading the panels. Um, you know, that can really hurt my, my solar harvest if I have people wandering around my panels and blocking off, you know, a portion of the string, which will be uh, four strings in, uh, in parallel and then 16 in series. So that pretty much um, fits well with this inverter. It's actually got two MPPT charge controllers, this maximum power point charge controller. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna modulate the current on the panel to get the maximum voltage current power output. And then it's gonna take that, convert that into the charge voltage for the battery, and then back into AC. Now I haven't done a round trip efficiency test on the panels yet, but I have done it on the battery. So I think when I, when I run the battery and the charger and I'm charging the vehicle, I think my round trip, um, I'm about 80%. So that's going from DC to AC and then the AC back to DC to the vehicle. So that's actually pretty good, I think, for all those conversion losses. In fact, I think it might be powered up now. We can maybe even turn it on. Give it a try. Oh, I should make sure my car charge current is set. Open up the Tesla app here. Forty-eight amp. Yeah, that's probably too much. We'll start off with sixteen. And let's see. Starting to charge. So it's at 16 amps. See the fans have come on. Oh, which reminds me of another thing is cooling. So part of the reason again to leave a little later in the year is the temperatures are cooler. But the great thing about the Tesla is you have, um, you have cabin overheat protection, which is kind of a passive you use with or without AC. And if that's not enough, I could put it in camp mode. Um, I'm not sure that I'll need that. This inverter is pretty efficient and it tends to run pretty cool. I did a test on it just charging. It's about 10% losses, so at 5,000 watts, which I won't be charging at that high nominally, I'll be lower than that. Um, it's only 5,500 watts, which is the equivalent heat of, I guess, four passengers sitting in a vehicle anyway. So if it can handle four passengers sitting in a vehicle, it shouldn't have any problem with the inverter. How I'm gonna stack them is each panel is gonna be face to face. So there'll be a junction box here and a junction box here. And then I'm gonna interlace the panels so that the two junction boxes on either side come together. So for four panels, I'll only have the stack height of one junction box. So about an inch, I'll get four panels. So my full stack of 64 panels will only be about a foot tall. So it's really compact. Sounds like you've got it all thought out. And uh, yeah, you must have it all thought out to be able to take on a task like this. So uh, it's good that you've gotten all the I's dotted and T's crossed. Tell us about some of the other interesting things, like everyone's going to love the flux capacitor, <laughs> but uh, you know, there's a fair amount of fun that you have to poke at this sort of endeavor, regardless of the, the real seriousness of it all. It's, it's a very noteworthy in, endeavor to try to cross the country and set what should be a Guinness World Record, if I understand yes, correctly. Yes, it, it should be. Um, 
I'd like to go sooner before later, once the Aptera comes out, that would easily blow this record out of the water. Their efficiency and their built-in solar with a small external solar array, that thing could probably only charge for a day and hit the road and go 300 plus miles. But yeah, it's fun to poke light at it. I'm a big Back to the Future fan, so you've got my plutonium here, the flux capacitor, and uh, sun power here is uh, Mr. Fusion. So that's where we'll get all our energy, right from the giant fusion ball in the, in the sky, so. <laughs> Well, very nice. Well, we certainly wish you the best of luck in this endeavor, and uh, we're, we're rooting for you. And uh, we recognize the innovation that you've brought to the industry with what you're trying to do, so thank you. Well, thanks for your time. It's, I've always enjoyed watching you guys on YouTube and seeing what you're up to, and it's a great, uh, great privilege, and it'll be a lot of fun to do this. And I'm gonna launch a YouTube channel as well, uh, I think it can be found at, at Solar Cannonball Run. And I've got a nice little logo. No videos yet, but my first video will be this Saturday at uh, M1 Concourse Cars and Coffee. I'll be out there. You'll probably miss it by the time you watch this video, but uh, that's where I'll cut my, my first video for the Solar Cannonball Run. All right. Joe, good luck to you. Thanks.